Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. In this video I am going to talk about the extensor muscles of the knee joint. Okay. So the extensor group of muscle in the knee joint are only your quadriceps muscle. Now the quadriceps includes four individual muscles, three vastus, okay, and one rectus femoris muscle. Three vastus includes vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius, which is present between the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. Vastus lateralis and vastus medialis muscle attaches to the medial and the lateral part of the patella okay basically i'm talking about the insertion of the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis muscle so it inserts in the medial and the lateral side of the patella now let's talk about the attachment so among the four muscles of the quadriceps three vastus and one rectus femoris rectus femoris is the only one which crosses the two joint that is your hip joint and the knee joint and it also has a different origin so it originates from the ASIS, which is your anterior superior iliac spine of the pelvis bone. Okay. The rest three vastus originates from the femur and it merge with the rectus femoris to form the quadriceps tendon. Now this same quadrice quadriceps tendon when passes the patella, it is known as patellar tendon or patellar ligament. So this is what I have written here. Quadriceps insert to the proximal patella and it continues distally passing the patella which is known as patellar tendon. So before patella it is known as quadriceps tendon and after the patella it is known as patellar tendon or patellar ligament. If you will go into the anatomy of the patellar tendon, so the patellar tendon runs from the apex of the patella into the proximal portion of tibial tuberosity. Now let's move forward. So I'm talking about each uh, muscles in detail. So first I'm talking about the vastus medialis muscle. So vastus medialis has two fiber. Upper fiber which is known as your vastus medialis longus VML or lower fiber which is known as vastus medialis oblique or VMO. Now the upper fiber or the vastus medialis longus it is angled 15 to 18 degrees medially from the femoral shaft. Okay. But the lower fiber or the vastus medialis oblique, since it is oblique, so it is more angled medially around 50 to 55 degrees. Okay. The resultant pull of the vastus medialis muscle is around 40 degrees medially. Okay. And the pull of the vastus lateralis muscle is around 35 degree laterally. Along with that, the pull of the vastus intermedius muscle is parallel to the shaft of the femur. So this is why it is known as the purest extensor of the knee joint. All right. Now, if you will talk about the resultant pull of all the muscles in the quadriceps, so that will be around seven to 10 degrees in the lateral rotation, sorry, in the lateral direction and three to five degrees anteriorly in relation to the axis of femur. Okay, so this is the resultant pull of all the four muscles in the quadriceps. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to discuss is the patellar influence on the quadriceps muscle. Okay, so patella basically the presence of patella lengthens the moment arm of quadriceps by increasing the distance of quadriceps tendon and patellar tendon from the axis of the knee joint. So there is just one function of patella. Okay. Uh, so patella increases the moment arm as you can see here this one here is your quadriceps quads okay so if patella won't be present here the moment arm would be very small okay so here in this case the patella is present so that means it the moment arm between the axis and the quadriceps tendon and patellar tendon the moment arm the distance between them would be increased okay now let's talk about the relationship between the ACL and the quadriceps. In the previous video, when I was talking about the ACL ligament particularly, in that video, I said that the function of the ACL is to restrain the anterior translation. Okay. And in that same video, I said that the quadriceps is the enemy to the ACL ligament. All right. Why? Because quadriceps produces the anterior translation of the tibia on femur and 
ACL restrains the anterior translation of the tibia on femur. Okay, so this is why when the knee approaches extension, there is tension created in the ACL. So ACL is strained due to quadriceps contraction. But when the flexion range of motion reaches beyond 60 degree, this strain decreases because beyond 60 degree there is no or very little anterior translation occurs okay so here is just the summary of the above statement quadriceps contraction will produce the anterior translation and that will lead to extension okay extension of the tibia on femur and acl causes posterior translation which happens during flexion okay now let's talk about what happens during weight bearing activities okay so during weight, weight bearing activities, I'm talking about the quadriceps muscle. So during weight bearing activity, along with the quadriceps, there are two more muscles which act together, soleus and glutes maximus. Okay. Now in weight bearing with the knee flexed during squatting position or when someone can't fully extend the knee, any pathological issues. Okay. Then the line of gravity. Okay line of gravity passes posterior to the knee joint axis okay you just need to remember this that in the weight bearing position with knees flexed or bent for example squatting the line of gravity will pass posterior to knee joint axis what axis i'm talking about flexion or extension axis okay but in erect posture the line of gravity will pass anterior to the knee joint axis axis for flexion and extension okay so in that case the activity of quadriceps is very minimal you don't need huge quadriceps force okay now along with that you can keep this in your mind that uh, quadriceps is twice stronger than the hamstring muscle okay because it supports the body weight and it also resists the force of gravity you can also ignore this point if you want to write it on your notes you can otherwise you can just completely skip it okay now let's talk about non weight bearing versus weight bearing state so uh, during non weight bearing position great greater quadriceps force is required when you approach full extension of the knee joint so basically in the non weight bearing position you could uh, assume seated flexion or seated extension okay so in the non weight bearing position when your knee goes from full flexion to full extension at that time greater force of the quadriceps muscle is required okay but completely opposite of it happens in the weight bearing activity such as standing or squatting okay so at that time quadriceps should produce greater force with approaching knee flexion all right now let's talk about uh, this is actually an extra topic but i'm going to discuss in this video because it was given in uh, i think case studies of the synthion organs okay so the next heading that I'm going to discuss is your quadriceps leg. What is this quadriceps? Sorry, not leg quadriceps lag. Okay. What is this quadriceps lag? So in the case of quadriceps weakness or patellectomy, when the patella is removed, then quadriceps may not be able to produce adequate torque to complete the last 15 degrees of extension. Okay. So at that time, when there is a weakness of the quadriceps, what will happen? So the patient will have difficulty to maintain the joint extension, knee joint extension, okay? Knee joint extension during SLR, okay? Straight leg raise. Now watch this diagram to understand what is quadriceps lag. As I've already said, it is due to quadriceps weakness, severe quadriceps weakness, okay? So during SLR, the patient is not able to maintain the extension of the knee joint which you can clearly see in this video and this happens during the slr okay so this is your quadriceps lag also this quadriceps lag does not occur during weight bearing position this was not a weight bearing okay when you perform the slr you don't perform it in the weight bearing position you perform it in non weight bearing position all right so when you are standing or when you are squatting that is your weight bearing position so this quadriceps lag even due to quadriceps weakness does not happens in the weight bearing stage okay because of the soleus and the gluteus maximus muscle because it helps in the extension of the knee joint 
now the last heading that i am going to discuss is your quadriceps strengthening that is weight bearing versus in non weight bearing position okay so weight bearing exercises are performed in the case of acl pcl or patello femoral injury okay acl and pcl means anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament all right now weight bearing exercises such as quadris sorry squatting leg press it results in posterior tibial shear force in the knee throughout the entire range of motion okay non weight bearing position involves anterior shear force during knee extension okay but along with that posterior shear force is also found during your non weight bearing exercises but between the 60 degrees and 101 degrees of knee flexion now here comes the last point okay so there are some weight bearing activities which produces similar acl strain value as non weight bearing activity does and those activities are one legged sit to stand lunges step up and stand down in weight bearing positions okay so this is it this was all about the extensor muscles of the knee complex or the knee joint okay